Gentlemen, hey, congratulations um, for the Mauritanian. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, so uh, so tell us, uh, what brought you guys on board on such an ambitious project like this? <laughs> well, so Rob, you go, you go. go. Okay, I, I mean, there's a lot of things. Obviously, this, the book, we read the book first. We were sent the book, uh, and Mohamedou's story is just incredibly compelling. Rory and I have always been interested on the subject of Guantanamo. There have been some movies done about it um, previously, but we felt like there's this true story and it really centered Mohamedou's, Mohamedou's experience and his character. And, you know, when you, when you read the book, it's, it's really, he is the extraordinary thing about the movie. And I think the story, and, and, and you really sense that. And that's why we, we came up with, of course, there's, Kevin was on it already and Benedict was a producer. And so we were really excited to work with them as well. So how, how different um, is the movie from the book that you guys had to adapt? Um, well, the book, I mean, the, I mean, the book is a fascinating document, not only as a read, but as a, like a piece of history of what it is because Muhammad wrote it in captivity. You know, it wasn't really... And he wasn't really writing a book. He was really just sort of writing an account of his time and what was happening. And um, it was actually, I mean, it's fascinating in itself. It was actually part of the strategy to try and get him released because at the time of the book being published, he was still detained in Guantanamo. Uh, in fact, even I think when the rights for the movie were picked up, he was still detained in Guantanamo. So uh the book is a really uh, singular perspective, and it's just Mohamedou's sort of experience of uh, being an inmate. Um, you know, uh, in the footnotes of the book, it it sort of goes into, you know, what happened with Stuart Couch and uh, a bit more about Mohamedou's relationship with his lawyers, Nancy Hollander um, and, and Terry uh, and Terry Duncan. So. So that is different from the book, you know, because obviously in the movie, we, there are, there's a much more um, perspective is also given to, to, to the two lawyers. So, so that's really what I would say is the main difference. Yeah. Excellent. Now, <clears throat> like sort of said uh, before, there, there are many movies that have done about the Guantanamo. Um, did you guys have to do any extra research to, to figure out, you know, the inner workings of what, what actually goes on be inside yeah, the we had the best source in the world with Mohamedou. <laughs> we, would, we would literally hype, hop on a Skype with him and be like, what was this like? I mean, he could, I mean, he knew it so well. He knew it better than the guards did, literally. And he credit to- He lived 16, 15 years of his life there. And so we would ask him, we would ask Nancy, we would ask, you know, we also, I think the hardest part of our research was a little bit of the, the JAG stuff with the lawyers because that's like the American justice system is confusing as it is and then you add the military justice on top of that and so what we actually did is we reached out to some JAG lawyers to help us kind of understand legally what was going on because we had to kind of make it digestible to an audience because it was quite confusing and, and, and the maneuvers and all that stuff. I think that but yeah, you know, we always do, we're very research oriented. So we do a ton of research and we just had so much help with this because of, of the involvement of the real people. Yeah. And I will say credit to, uh, to Kevin, the director, who was so um, meticulous about getting Guantanamo right and, and making sure that it didn't feel like a sort of a more comfortable movie-esque environment you know he was really wanted it to be exactly uh, as it was and in fact uh my my understanding is he got it so accurate that some of Stuart Couch's military friends had called him after the movie came out to complain that they couldn't believe that they that the filmmakers were allowed to film in Guantanamo that's how convincing the replication was so even the people who know the place were like wow they actually filmed there. That's how it convincing it was. So, so that's a cute. That's not us. That's a cute us to the production design. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 
you guys mentioned that you you basically uh, spoke directly to Mohamedou and uh, Nan- Nancy Hollander. Um, let, let's start with Mohamedou. What was what was he like in them personally? You guys actually went on Skype calls with him. He's great. I mean, he's just like I I feel like part of the the, the hardest part of writing him was like if writing him you you would think that we were making him up because he's just like this he really has a larger than life personality and he really like considering what was done to him and what he survived you wouldn't you couldn't believe it when you meet him now because of just just how genuinely human he is like he's just like the first thing he's like how are you guys how's your family like you know he just he's just tuned into other people and very empathetic and I think that's it's kind of extraordinary he swears and he's just like you know he's just you would never know if you met him that he went through this incredibly horrific ordeal you know and that's a testament to his humanity kind of overcoming the the dark places that he was forced into so through, through these conversations, he tells you uh, more extra stories than went on beyond the book? Yeah, I think for us, it was about, I mean, really it was about grappling with, with him as a character, what his background is, you know. I mean, obviously, look, when you're writing a movie, you're not just telling a series of events. You're trying to take a, an audience on a journey with a character and, and who they can connect with. And that was even more important, obviously, because... Uh, you know, he, he's so contained in the movie. He had, he, he, you know, um, and so we had to sort of try and put Muhammadu's larger than life personality into someone who's so, so contained in, in the film. So, so a lot of it was really about getting into his perspective on things that, that weren't just about what happened, but how did it feel? Why did he do something? To, why did he do this? Why did they do that? What, you know, what was the sort of emotionality of what was going on? Absolutely. Do you guys feel under pressure when you're writing a story like this and um, these are real life people who are still alive today? Yeah, of course. I think it's impossible to. Um, I also think that, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I think that it's really a question of yeah, just trying to tell the truth and being authentic who the characters are. I think we do a lot of stories that even if they're not true stories revolve in real world situations and real world, you know, complexities. Uh, And so I think we always feel an immense amount of pressure, not just to, to, just because it's a true story, but because true things within that subject area are happening in the world. And, you know, it's obviously an incredible privilege to to be able to make movies and television and tell stories to millions of people uh but it's a massive massive responsibility you know for many people they might see the mauritanian and that's the only thing they'll ever watch about Montanamo. and so you are shaping people's opinions and people's mindsets you know so that even if regardless of it being a true story to someone personally or not you're still you're still holding a megaphone and you're, you have a responsibility to what you talk about and how you frame things and not to be lazy and sloppy in terms of, you know, oh, this is like that because it's easier and it's more fun in a movie to do it like that. Uh, so, so absolutely the pressure is that we talk about it all the time. I mean, a lot of what we debate when we're writing is about if someone sees this, what are they going to take away from that? What is the meaning of that? Why? You know what I mean? That's super important to us. And um, you also spoke with uh, Nancy herself. Um, what was she like? She's a lot nicer in real life. <laughs> I will say that. I think that, the, uh, you know, she's an extraordinary person. She's, she's another extraordinary person. I mean, she was, she was protesting the, the Vietnam War, going to North Vietnam when she was like 16 or 17. You know, like she was, she's been like crusading uh for the rights of people for so long. And, you know, I think there's a cost that comes with that. And, and I think she'd probably be the first person to tell you that as well. And part of 
it for us is just like why is this story because again like for her she's led such an extraordinary life it's like why is this why is this case different than the others and it really is for her it really is different Mohamedou is she doesn't normally have relationships that go beyond the case with many of her clients and she's still really close friends with Mohamedou to this day and I think that's a testament to their to what they went through together. And, and again, she's, she's also just an extraordinary person. I think when, when you speak to her, she's very pragmatic, <laughs> which is really nice and, and interesting in a character who's kind of a crusader. I think that's always really interesting. It's she's not just, oh, I have to do this because I believe in right and wrong. It's, she's also trying to actually get results as well. Excellent. Well, let me uh, start wrapping things up uh, with, with both of you here. Um, I just want to be noted that uh, you guys are both writing a, uh, a film that a lot of people are anticipating of called uh, Black Adam. I know you can't, you know, um, tell me anything, but uh, tell me about the experience on um, adapting a comic book like Black Adam that a lot, you know, millions of people are waiting for. Um, yeah, well, that brings a pressure of its own type, obviously, uh, in a different way, because when you're dealing with, you're working with people like Dwayne, um, you know, there's, it's, this is something on a scale that we've not worked on before. I mean, Dwayne's obviously the biggest movie star on the planet, arguably. And, and so he's, he's well aware of what it is and, 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 you know, knows what something needs to be. And so you're trying to match that bar and, and make sure uh you know this is something that people can really that fans can really enjoy um so i mean it's been really fun i will say it, given the scope of it you would think it would be sort of this intense thing but it's just been a lot of fun everybody's great i mean it's really I, I know that you're supposed to say that but genuinely everybody's been really lovely we've had a really pleasant experience and just a lot of fun writing it excellent Gentlemen, hey, congratulations once again for Mauritanian and uh, um, can't wait to, to, uh, to check out your other future projects um, itself. And this is the only this is the only movie that I had to Google to see where this country is. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Gig. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye now.